After days of public protest against its policies, the Bulgarian government has resigned. Joe Parkinson is in Sofia, the Bulgarian capital, where he has been watching the political crisis develop. Joe, did Prime Minister Boyko Borisov's decision come as a shock? Uh, it, it actually did, Nick. I mean, we've had days now of swelling protests against austerity policies and particularly high energy prices, but I don't think anybody expected this government to fall so far so fast. Only a few months ago, this government was defying political gravity by cutting spending uh, with a pro-austerity policy, but still it maintained popularity. That's all changed. Now we've just seen this morning uh, the latest victim of the euro crisis. I mean, it is quite interesting, Hedjo, that um, you know the prime minister had sacked his pro-austerity finance minister. He also seemed to be trying to uh, cut electricity prices, which was one of the things certainly the protesters didn't like. Well, I guess it, in retrospect, it looks all a little bit like uh, political sacrifices to maintain popularity. You're right. He sacked the pro-austerity finance minister, Minister Simeon Diankov, on Monday, a man who was internationally very popular for uh, keeping his hand firmly on the tiller of Bulgaria's economy, but domestically very unpopular for exactly the same reason, cutting spending, cutting pensions, cutting wages. Uh, the next day after that didn't appease protesters, uh, the prime minister, the now former prime minister, went after the energy companies that have been jacking up prices. Uh, he said that Chez, uh, the biggest uh, Czech electricity distributor, uh, would be fined and would have its license revoked. That still didn't appease protesters who came out en masse last night, despite the freezing temperatures. And, um, you know, there was some, uh, there was a little bit of violence. Uh, there were altercations with the police and the prime minister this morning decided that uh, enough was enough. I mean, one can't help thinking that, you know, protesting outside in the summer is one thing, but protesting outside in the middle of winter is another, and that really just goes to show the strength of it. But let's look at Bulgaria itself, Joe. I mean, it is essentially one of the EU's poorest members, isn't it? It is. It is the EU's poorest member, actually, per capita GDP. Uh, it's one of its newest members, and it's on its southeastern flank. I mean, the problems of Bulgaria's politics are well known. Corruption, graft, uh, a lack of competitiveness. Uh, but it's actually been a, something of a bright spot for the European Union over the past few years, because in a time or in a context where budget deficits have been off the charts, Bulgaria seemed to have a handle on it, on, on its own budget situation. Uh, that said, what looks good from the outside isn't necessarily always good on the inside. And what we've seen uh, over the past few weeks is the government's popularity just plunging like a stone. Well, and, um, and, and, and yes, I mean, you know, they've fallen victim to that today. I mean, OK, what happens now politically, Joe? Any idea? Um, well, we, elections were scheduled for July, so what we're going to have is the president, who's normally in a ceremonial role, will form a caretaker government. Uh, that caretaker government will administer uh, the country until elections can be called. Analysts are saying elections could be called as early as April. Uh, there may be some wrangling about how forming some sort of coalition because there's not one party that is expected to get a majority and then we could optimistically have a government by May. That said, that's an optimistic reading of things and now we're entering something of a political crisis here which could have ramifications on the downside. Joe, we'll keep a close eye on it. Thank you very much indeed.